Hello, blessed and beloved channel. Welcome to this new Jewelry Jedi tutorial. Today, I'm going to create a bracelet, or better said, a cuff. Let's go to the front view. Add mesh circle, vertices 200. Now, sizes X, 65 millimeters, 52 on the y-axis. You're going to get an oval like that, which represents a large cuff standard size. Now, let's call this cuff size. Let's make a copy, ship D, F2 to rename. This is cuff solid. Go to edit mode, extrude on the y-axis, 20, add modifier, mirror on the y-axis. If nothing happens on the desired axis, exit edit mode, control A, all transforms. Here we are. Don't forget to save and be happy. Edit mode, control I, scale. 1.25 will be just fine. Go to loop cut, cut here in the middle, scale 1.068. Exit edit mode, add modifier, solidify modifier, offset minus one, thickness two. Now add a bevel modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. Level three, like this. Don't forget to make a shade auto smooth. Save and be happy. Now go to front view. Now we're going to scale to readjust the real size here. It's not necessarily the same on each axis. So adapt right here. Now go to edit mode and see Alt A, B. Select this half, delete vertices. Make the mirror on the x-axis also. Now, down here, let's add mesh cube. Size 35. Center it and lower it. Take the cuff. Go to edit mode. Transparency. Now, select these vertices. Lead vertices. This is where the cuff fits, enters the rest. Now, in edit mode, select this vertex. Shift S cursor to select it. Turn the proportional editing on and don't forget to set the transform pivot point to 3D cursor. Now we're ready to scale here on the Y axis. Now let's go at point 35. You need to test the proportional size down here. Now also you can test different option for the proportional fall off. My favorite one is the smooth one, which is the default one. Now, if you suddenly have rebel vertices like me, turn off the proportional editing and deal with the usual suspects. It might be an entire row. Check also on the inside, have faith, and you will find a perfect balance save and be happy now maybe you want the end to be rounded from view extrude and scale and adapt the position if the middle vertex moves set it to zero on the y-axis to make it easier to cursor to select it again and 3d cursor for for the center of maneuvers Keep extruding, keep scaling, keep adapting. Extrude, scale, extrude, and scale, scale, and adapt. Bottom view, here we can adjust the shape like this. Once you're happy, close the ending right there and adapt the vertices as needed to make a smooth ending. Don't forget to check and also on the inside. Once you're happy with the shape, save and be happy. Exit edit mode. Have a look at your bracelet because this will be the base shape for everything that's coming. So you better be ready. Now we're going to pan a magnificent gemstone. So let's go to an oval shaped gemstone. 
20 per 25. Copy paste the scale, move it on the Z axis, and I'm going to rotate it in this direction. Set the viewboard color for the gemstone here. Now, and while you're at it, let's go and append a small diamond. They will be 3.5 millimeters in diameter right here. And we'll create the settings as the design moves forward. For now, let's save and be happy. Let's append your favorite gold material to the cuff at one. Let's set the viewport shading here. Everything looks better already. Now select the center stone, make a copy, shift D, enter. Let's make the setting for the stone. It's going to be in gold. Let's go to edit mode, transparency. Let's select the shape of the stone right here. Control I, delete the rest. A scale on the Z axis to zero. Now we're going to start extruding. Extrude on the Z axis. Now, obviously, don't forget that you always need to do a version for the render and another version for the manufacturing. Here, we're going to make the model for rendering. Let's keep extruding. Extrude and scale and place. Extrude and scale. Let's take this gemstone. Let's rotate it here. Let's place it. Let's have a look at the proportions. We're too big already there. Let's expand the selection. Control plus and let's scale down a bit and adapt. Let's move the stone into position here. Let's go back to the setting. This one extrude scale position. The metal must grab the gemstone slightly, even if we are going to use prongs. It's just a better practice for setting your stones securely. Extrude scale. Front view, keep adapting. Extrude on the Z axis. We're going inside. Let's scale. Let's make it slightly conical. Now, extrude, scale, move up slightly. This distance here is going to be the thickness of your setting. Extrude, we're working on the inside now. Extrude scale. Now we're following the angle here. Now we need to connect and support the stone. But beware, we need to support it without touching it because the only part that you touch the stone is here at the girdle. Now select the first line and do an edge, bridge edge loops. It means that we have created a perfect bezel setting for our amethyst. Select everything, Alt N, normals to the outside. Now, save if you want. Add modifier bevel, pretty neat. We might do it slightly smaller. And let's do a subdivision surface. Level 3. If you want a sharper model, add more segments to your bevel. Now, we're going to distribute the diamonds. Let's make a copy. Let's bring this one to zero here and 90 degrees on the Z axis. The angle here might vary slightly. And so the position. Now here, if the stone doesn't fit, what does that mean? It means that these levels of the bezel need adjustment on the y-axis. So adapt to the gemstone. Scale the inside to right here. Now readapt your diamond and its position right there. Slightly, slightly inside the metal. Very slightly. Now add the mirror modifier from the amethyst to the other side. Do the same here, right there. Now, copy the diamond, add the other axis, and start rotating. You can take this facet tip from the gemstone to check the orientation of the rotation. Copy, rotate, move. In fact, we don't have that many 
gemstones. And like this, you have a lot of control over the position, gem by gem. If you're following my channel, you should know that many automated processes are born to fail because technology has a magnificent nature and essence of failing when you need it the most. And that's why step-by-step -step slow human process has that specific magic touch of not failing. And also, we humans, even if we might fail a lot, and we do fail a lot, we can always correct and readapt and learn from all those mistakes and do it right. And if we fail again, we'll start again. And we'll fail again. And guess what? Just try again. And in the end, we'll do it right. Shift D, rotate, adapt. And obviously the spaces between the gemstones, you don't know at first, but slightly readapt as needed. And you will see that you will get really nice and even distances between the stones. Just like this. Now take the bezel, go to edit mode, go to loop cut, make a loop cut right here. Make a copy of this oval, separate it. Now take this oval we just extracted and we're going to do a path because obviously we also want to learn more automated tools and modifiers and ways to do things. I know you guys, I know you people, you want the easy way. So that's why we always need to learn the hard way and the easy way. An object convert to curve and that's a path right now. Tab view, add mesh, sphere, a bit a higher resolution, 60, 30. Decorative spheres on this path, smooth shading, gold. Center it, add modifier, array make them overlap very slightly like this now let's go to count of maybe a hundred we don't know the count we don't care right now the milligram when you have a lot of small spheres on a path in real life it's called a milligram it comes from classic jewelry from the italian classic jewelry and passed to the french jewelry and then passed to the rest of the world milligrano and modify your curve and we just made the path. Here it is. So it's not working because take the path and make a control A all transforms. Here you go. Now this looks amazing and let's go to edit mode. Now what happened is that the mean radius is this needs to be one exit edit mode. Now we have a milligram, but we can do the array. Let's go to fit type, fit length, and let's start working here on the length and not on the count lower or raise the factor and then just find the perfect x factor for your length right here now for the other row here i also want a decoration but not the same one let's select this first row right there top row let's make a poke faces and let's select the centers right there raise that on the z-axis and scale slightly here. It's always nice to have contrasts in your designs. Now we need prongs with diamonds, top view, add mesh sphere, same resolution we set earlier, gold, smooth, prong, zero, zero, 001. Side view, edit mode, transparency. Let's adapt the height here. Now we need to adapt the center of mass. It's gotta be pretty low, great. Turn on the snap, project face, center, and in rotation to target, move, rotate, great. Now we're going to test if the center of mass of the prong is correct and the size. Okay, so what we can see is that prong is too short. Let's go back to edit mode. Don't forget to remove the magnet a bit lower. Okay, and also the prong is too big. Very slightly adapt. Turn on the mirror on X and Y based on the amethyst. Snap is on, make a copy. And this is how the prong setting begins. Shift D. And like I said earlier, this might be a bit too low for manufacturing, but it's perfect for rendering. But that depends on the preferences of your gemstone setter. 
very clean and very fast. Okay, now here on the bezel, I still want a small decoration. Edit mode, loop cut, loop cut at this level. One time, two times, three times. Let's reduce this like that to have a very nice decorative line on the sides of this oval shaped bezel setting. Save and be happy if you like. Now, the cuff. The shape is pretty simple, but we want some borders. Let's go to edit mode and let's select these vertices. Make a copy, shift, enter, P, separate selection. Now go to what we've just selected here. So here, what we're going to change is that the solidify offset is going to be zero. Now, what we have is that we don't have any faces. We need to take this and extrude it. Extrude, click and scale right there. And I almost already like it. Obviously, I don't want it to end in a sharp way. Bottom view, extrude this. Let's adapt, extrude, extrude. Take details when necessary, right there. And extrude until you reach this. S, Y, zero, zero and Y. Adapt the position and you get a perfect clean ending. Exit edit mode. Let's call these orders. Save and be happy. So this looks fantastic and all, but we have a couple of problems. This cuff, this bangle, this bracelet is going to be way too heavy. Anyway, it's going to be heavy because it's big, but don't exaggerate on the weight. We want also some decorations on the cuff. And what a better way to make decorations than making amazing cuts with amazing shapes let's go at top view add mesh plane let's move it above the surface let's add a mirror modifier based on the solid cuff right there find the axis x and y works for me now let's add a shrink wrap modifier the target is the solid cuff right here. And we're going to make an offset so it goes over the surface like this. Now also we're going to add a solidify modifier like this so it cuts through the solid cuff. And then we'll make the cuts, but first we need to design them. So the cuts, let's go to edit mode. Here we are a bit too far away you don't necessarily have to rotate the design that you're going to make, but it's a bit easier if you do rotate and you're not too far from the surface. So we'll have to follow the surface. That's something that makes the design a bit easier, more precise, more control. And in the end, it's all better for you and your design. The plane. So let's go merge at center. Let's start at zero x let's extrude this let's go there and a let's extrude on the x-axis but we're going to make very nice triangle cuts as a designer as an artist and as a person because we can say that simplicity is one of the best ingredients for happiness so something important You've noticed at the beginning, I did a quad because now I can cut it here in the middle and adapt the resolution of my cuts when and where necessary. And now here, I'm going to start, go to edges, select these guys, delete edges. So if you've used quads just like me, you know that you'll have no problems in making variations. Keep it simple now here i want to do something different so here i don't want a cut i want a raised edge decoration so we're going to adapt the offset of the solidify is going to be zero thickness two maybe now let's go to edit mode so we need a bevel right here and this is a raised decoration here so now what we have to do is keep making those decorations
So far, so good. Save and be happy. Now here, we need more gemstones. You guessed it. We want more colors on such a big cuff. So, I'm going to set some semi-precious gemstones inlays right here on the side. And for that, we need some raised up lines or designs. Now here, I can select everything. LP on the Z axis. Move up, move up. So now we're going to make the small inlay gemstones. Let's copy this from what we already have to fill the spots. So let me append a semi-precious some gemstone from my library, Jade. The color here is slightly greenish. We might alternate. That will have to be cut one by one. So this process is important, especially when you know that you are personally going to supervise the process or that you're going to manufacture the jewel yourself because then obviously your brain and muscles remember what you train because this is training i said earlier this is training for real life and that's why i always recommend you to train as a jeweler you'll obviously will be a much better jewelry designer more interesting and more fun because you're preparing, you're training yourself for what will be the manufacturing process in real life. And that's very enjoyable. So see, we have our small inlays, semi-precious gemstones there. What I can do at once is that I'm going to append another semi-precious gemstone material. Let's go to Lapis Lazuli right here. Blue. Now, down here on the side, we are going to keep making cuts because remember, we're also here to remove weight. We are here anyway in full action. And here I made a raised zone here because obviously I want some pavé and I'm using some garnet, very nice almond and garnet material for the gems. And I'm almost done with the pavé. So the face project is already configured as earlier. And now I'm making the distribution. And as always, explaining that the good old fashioned experienced distribution is much better than let's say an AI distribution or automated distribution okay wait so now we need prongs Never be too sure of what you're doing. Always leave some doubt around here in your head in what you're doing. Be proud of what you're doing when you're doing it well. Never be that sure that you're doing it perfectly and perfectly well. So you'll have room for correcting your mistakes because you know that you can make mistakes and you'll be able to see them and accept them. And that will make your life and your job a lot easier. And sometimes because the best things that can happen to you are mistakes. So if you're open to that, instead of trying to use automated tools that are going to make everything perfect for you and in your place, basically, and destroying your life by doing so, never forget that we must tend to perfection. But perfection is just an ideal, an utopia. And imperfection is what keeps us alive cutters now actually for all the gemstones so let's select all the gemstones 
Okay, let's make a copy of this. So let's make a Shift D, Alt C to apply the mirror, Control J to bring them together. Let's call these cutters garnets so we know the position. Let's hide these cutters. Let's take the base, local view. Let's go add Boolean. Now here, fast solver. Let's search for the cutters and we have the perfect cuts. Now it's all about the bezel. So the bezel is going to get the Boolean. Boolean right here. Fast solver, cutters, diamonds top, local view. We have very nice cuts. Here at the top, we need cut under this friend. So let's make, okay, and we're going to make a cut right here. And this is going to be good enough for what we need. This is a very simple cutter. We're going to make it slightly conical right there, obviously. So let's have a look at the distance, okay, here to the cutters. Okay, this is pretty good. I kind of like this double edge. Perfect. Now let's take the cuff again. Let's add the Boolean fast solver first. Let's remove this. Let's hide that. Let's remove the cutters from rendering and let's start observing the design. Now here there's something important on the ergonomy side. This tip right there and the distance to there, that is going to be a problem because the only solid part of the structure is this corner here, is this zone right here. And that's the only thing supporting the bottom from the top. If I run the manufacturing of this cuff without making this bridge right there, it would be a huge problem in real life because what would happen is that the tip of the design there that was free earlier can very easily get stuck in a piece of clothing, by example. So it can be dangerous and that's not nice. Accidents with jewels, that's a real thing. So now this is much better for the structure of the bracelet. We've created quite an amazing piece of jewelry design. This amazing 3D model gold cuff with gemstones and semi-precious gemstones inlays. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting my channel and my work. My name is Damien Rohrbach. I'm a professional jewelry designer and jeweler. Blessed and beloved channel. Take care and see you soon.